Hey everyone, August Severn here with Capital Data Analytics. Today we're going to talk about the marketing mix model, otherwise known as MMM or maybe media mix model. Um, kind of the high level idea behind it is, is we're trying to take some kind of KPI, so in this case sales, uh, and break that down by the activities from the business or maybe non-business activities uh, to try to assign value to those, those activities. Um, so kind of in the most general way to look at it would be this image here. So we have our sales KPI. Um, we have our data based around our activities or non-activities. Um, so by activities, I mean how much are we spending on something like Google ads, uh, TV placements, uh, Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then on the non-activity side, as I referred to it, uh, we're talking about things like seasonality, uh, maybe it's promotions, maybe it's trending. So if your business is growing over time, uh, you're getting more sales, you know, you would expect that baseline of sales to kind of be increasing over time. So the idea behind the mixed marketing model, marketing mix model is too many M's, uh, is that you kind of take that overall KPI, you break it down to this decomposition picture here into those elements using that kind of base data. So a little bit of background about the MMM. Uh, so it's a you know, older model in quotes uh, that's kind of come into vogue recently. Uh, you know, multi-touch attribution kind of got its time in the sun. Uh, but now with some of the privacy features going on with the digital platforms, uh, there's kind of been a shift back into marketing mix model. Uh, so kind of the two main features of why you'd want to use the MMM is that uh, it's privacy friendly. So you don't need to have user level data. Uh, I don't need to have a big long you know, user journey and track every click uh, kind of process and, and data implementation process. You're just looking at high level uh, information. So that would be things like campaign spend, uh, you know, channel spend, uh, what are holidays for your region, et cetera, et cetera. So that just makes data collection a lot easier uh, and obviously implementation a lot easier. It also means that you're not having to deal with compliance issues of, hey, I'm tracking, you know, somebody, uh, let's say in Europe and they have different policies versus somebody in Iowa versus somebody in California. Um, so it kind of solves for those issues. Uh, the second piece of why MMM is kind of, uh, you know, in vogue now is, is it's a holistic model. So you can include your, your digital, your online pieces with your offline pieces. Uh, you don't have to create, you know, hey, I have a multi-touch attribution model that has great data online, but we basically have no insights on our offline uh, activities. So it kind of helps solve for that problem as well. So marketing mix model solves for a variety of questions uh, in the marketing space, but a, a couple of the you know, most important ones um, are how do I optimize my spend? So basically where do I need to put my money uh, to get the most value out of that marketing spend? Another question might be which channels provide the most ROI? Um, so specifically, you know, what is this channel providing me uh, when it comes to uh, sales in this case? Uh, and then kind of a third example would be, okay, if I want to increase my sales by 15%, you know, where should I put my money to do that? Um, so those are three kind of high level questions that you know, a lot of the other questions kind of roll up into in some form or another, uh, but those are good business questions that uh, MMM can answer. So finally, I just want to go over a few of kind of the outputs from an MMM, MMM model um, real quick here. So you can obviously find out more information by reading through the entire article. This video is just kind of a general summary uh, to make it nice and fast hitting. Uh, but look at the article if you want some more details. So the outputs that I'm going to show you here are the descriptive outputs, the first of which is a waterfall chart. 
So basically what this waterfall chart, and I, again, it's blurry due to blowing up this image, uh, what this is doing is showing you the amount of value that each channel or activity provides um, for the total KPI or sales. So as you can see, your competitor sales uh, has a, the largest effect on uh, your, your overall sales. Your trend has a pretty large effect. So maybe that's something like, um, you know, you're growing over time, so you should expect, you know, a larger baseline sales. Uh, the next is your TV placements. So right here you can see, okay, that's kind of our largest, our best marketing channel because um, it's the first marketing channel. So it has the biggest impact on sales. Uh, and then all the way down here, you know, once you get into this red line here, you can see like, okay, seasonality is causing a negative impact. Uh, so the, this waterfall chart is just a good way to summarize kind of the outputs of the model. Uh, without having to look at the coefficients, uh, just to kind of know what's going on. The second descriptive output, uh, which is what I think is kind of the most uh, interesting piece of MMM, uh, is this diminishing return curves. So you can see here, each one of these lines represents a curve uh, for a specific channel. Uh, so you can see the red line is TV spend, so the idea here is, is if I move up the curve, so I spend more on TV, you know, what is the corresponding uh, value of revenue that's returned? So how much sales do I get back? Uh, each one of these curves is going to be a little different. So the flatter it is, that means the less return you're going to have on your spend as you, you spend more. You know, the more kind of vertical it is, the higher return you're going to have uh, for every dollar, additional dollar you spend. So the concept behind here is, you know, if I told you that, you know, hey, you're returning $2 for every dollar you spend in Facebook ads, you would go out and spend, you know, infinite amount of money on Facebook ads because it's a positive return, right? Now that's unrealistic because as you spend more, there's only so many customers out there. You're going to have to spend more, you know, as you get kind of out towards that end of customers because you're, you know, those last few customers are going to cost more than the initial few. Um, you know, the targeting might get less good, uh, something like that. So that's going to cause this kind of curve to flatten out over time. Uh, so these curves just describe that process of as you spend more, what would the, you know, what should the response be uh, as you move along that curve? Uh, the, the one downside of looking at these diminishing curves is it can give you a false sense of like, this is specifically what's going to happen. Um, you know, you need to know, you need to have enough data and enough data points to kind of understand, okay, if I throttle it down, if I throttle it up, what would that do for that specific channel? But assuming you have a lot of variation in your spend over time and a big enough data set, you know, this should do a pretty good job of describing your, your spend. Um, the other thing that you can do with these diminishing curves is you can compare uh, curves on different snapshots of time to look at efficiency. So, you know, if I have a pretty flat curve here in this light blue one, uh, so that'd be your Facebook uh, impressions, uh, that, see how that flattens out pretty quick. So we kind of lose any additional uh, sales response uh, by spending more money on it pretty fast. Now, if I pulled this again at a different time frame and compared it, and the curve was something like this red curve, right? So it's it's higher. Uh, we would say, oh, you know, whatever we're doing, we're doing better targeting, better content, you know, better creatives, whatever it is. Uh, we're providing kind of higher level uh, curve. So we're doing better in general. Um, so that's one way to also look at the curves is instead of just looking at it as a system of, hey, here's all of our curves of our channels, you can also do comparisons over time to say, okay, our curve used to look like this, now it looks like this. Uh, you know, that's better, that's doing better in the marketing front. So maybe, like I said, maybe that's better creative, better whatever, but it's in general better. Um, so this is a quick overview of the article read the rest of the article to kind of get the, the rest of the information, um, but I hope you enjoy.